Yo, 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 what's up, people? This your boy P. Ross back in the building with the homies. Yo, what up, everybody? This is Micah, a.k.a. CMS. And this is L. Buggy. Y'all know what's going on. Yo, we gonna um, go ahead and review that uh, dope-ass MPG show that they just did tonight. At the Fine Line. Talking about the MPG. Yeah. Live at the Fine Line Cafe. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Downtown Minneapolis. Woo. Lord, Absolutely. Yeah, it was a hot show, man. Definitely. It was a hot ass show. You know. It was definitely functified. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, first impressions, uh, Sam. What's your first impressions of the show? I thought it was. Uh, I thought the band was tight. Um, good set list. Uh, they had a special guest, Miss Tamar. Davis. Yes, Lord. Yes, mm -hmm. Lord. Yes, Lord. And, um, I mean, you know, they they did the damn thing, man. I mean, uh, even uh, the good luck charm, LC, was also in the in attendance with us, and uh, she, mm -hmm. thought, she thought the show was amazing, so. Oh, yeah. You know? Yes, uh, sir. Good crowd. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it was a little hot in there, and you know, there was a few people that was a little too pushy. But hey, you know, everybody trying to get up to the front, but everybody can't get up to the front. Mm -hmm. So, but it's all in all, good show. I enjoyed it. Um, not as good as the First Avenue, but still a good show. You know, that First Avenue was that's gonna be hard to top, man. Oh yeah. Well, that was more the complete band too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. So, it was. You know, I mean, even though it wasn't a complete band, they still was. They still was tight. It was yeah. tight. And yeah, I do, I did yeah. like the the new. Well, I'm gonna say new, but uh, a feature singer, mm -hmm. uh, the, the um, slim dude, Killer Cam. I think that yeah. was his name. I keep, I keep forgetting his name. He, yeah. Well, when he bounced on stage, he just, he just kind of reminded me of a Debar or something. Right. But yeah. Yeah, but I mean, he was cool. You yeah. know, he was cool. He didn't take away from the show. You know, mm -hmm. I thought him and McKenzie. I was like, well, why ain't McKenzie singing that? But right, it it worked out pretty well. So mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, and then Tamar was Tamar. I mean, Tamar is the real deal. Always been the real deal. Uh, like I said back in the day, you know, her album should have came out and been a hit because she's that type of talent. And. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. You know her. You know she did redhead stepchild. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, I always did they, like that song. They tore it off yeah. the hinges, you know. So um, had a lot of energy on stage too. Yeah, energy, her energy is yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Her energy is whew, is definitely um, on ten. You know um, what I like about it. She less. She don't. She, she she's she's a pretty woman. Who she's not worried about being pretty. When she performs, she just performs, but she still look good doing what she mm -hmm. <laughs> doing what she do. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, when she took her shoes off once, and she was out there barefoot doing her thing. You know, um, mm -hmm. but definitely um, the red haired chip, chip, red haired step, chip, step, step child. child was a highlight for me. Mm -hmm. As far as the song that she did, the new guy you talking about or the uh, the other singer. Killer Cam. Him, yeah. uh, I think he did a pretty a good job of One Does Cry. I think he did a good job of One Does Cry. Um, Mc cool. And Mackenzie, uh, wow. Mackenzie was killing a lot of songs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was. Uh, call My Name. For it, me. Yeah, Call that My Name. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. one. Yeah, the Call cross. My Name, The Cross. Uh, he was unbelievable. He was unbelievable. Love Die. Uh, oh, yeah. Love yeah. Die. Yeah. 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 Um, and then Levi's guitar solo was spectacular. Spectacular, spectacular yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and Morris Great Hayes time. in the back, you know, directing, you know, directing this, you know, uh, Starship or whatever, mm -hmm. Ship, MPG. I mean, we love Morris, and he's funny, you know what I'm saying? Morris is very, uh, um, what I call, uh, he, he gives the comedic moments to the crowd, you know, him and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, Damon D. Damon D did his thing. And uh, but Tony M definitely uh I can see why Prince mm -hmm. did Gold Nigga. Or let them 
do their thing. Right. Even without Prince, they, they funky as hell. And they have their own personality. They got swag. They got serious swag. Mm-hmm. And Tony M definitely got serious swag. And the right. more and more I listen to Tony M rap, especially now, you know, I just say, I think he got a bad bad deal back in the day, man. He got a bad deal, bro. Oh, yeah, for sure. Deal, oh, yeah, no doubt. Because I like no his doubt. flow. You know, the new song, you know, funk, Funkified. I love, I love the new song. I love the rap on the new song. I love the rap from the old song. I mean, if you really think about it's it. called The Law and Johnny and, and you know. If I mean, you really you know. think about it, the shit that he was doing back then are actually doing today. Right. You know what I'm saying? With, you know, crazy outfits. Right. You know what I mean? Crazy hair and shit. You know. Just you know. took a while for the game to catch up. He had a little showmanship. Came out there with the cane, the suits. You know what I'm saying? They was, they was tight. You know, they was pimped out. Mm-hmm. And then... uh Came back in something a little more cool and relaxing, you know what I'm saying? Right. That was after was like the white. fourth song, though, right? Right. right? Yeah. That was quick as hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they were, um, like I said, the guy on the horn was good. Yeah, yeah. he played the flute, too. And he played the flute. And the bass player, I don't know who the new bass player I was going to say, who, was. Who, who was on the bass? Was that Josh? Uh, I thought it was Josh. Uh, Dunham? Yeah, that's yeah, what I thought it was. Yeah. That's what it looked like. So that's that's Corey's husband. Yeah. Yo, that bass solo that he did oh, yeah. on I Could Never Take the Place mm-hmm. of Your Man. It was nasty. That now, was a nasty bass solo. Yeah, I don't remember the whole set list. I do remember they did come on. Yeah, yeah, come that was, on, yeah, that was baby. tight. Mm-hmm. And it had a, d- a different little beat to it, but it was tight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was a hell of a show. It was mm-hmm. a hell of a show. You know, they didn't over overdo things. They didn't yeah. draw songs. It's like um, Purple Rain, I thought, you know, because most people try to right. draw Purple Rain all the way out to, mm-hmm. you know, to get that emotional um, response, but yeah. it was short, sweet, and powerful, because all three singers sung, sang on Purple Rain, Yeah, which was cool. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was, like I said, powerful show. Mm-hmm. Powerful show, but like uh, CMS said, it definitely is a close second to the the First Avenue show. The First, First Avenue show, show was, was just a, it was historic, though. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Tamar had an emotional moment. Yes, yeah. yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, she yeah. sang Beautiful, uh, that, Loved and Blessed. That, that was another highlight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. That version was yeah. just great. And she had just said earlier that Prince said, that, uh, what Prince said about that song, that he could never sing that song with her. With Ever no again, or, or because, with anybody else? Was that nah, what nah. What she said was Prince could never sing that song ever again. Oh, okay. Because the world ain't ready for it. It's that it, deep. It's that deep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah. <laughs> After the seven, well, I could have sworn something. they performed that on a couple of the uh, Tamar shows, though. Didn't they? I don't remember that. I don't remember that, yeah. Yeah, okay. I have to go back and listen to some shows. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we, um, earlier today, we were at the, uh, I forget what the event was called, but it was a panel discussion. The PRN alumni. Um, oh, okay, yeah. The, yeah, the PRN alumni did this uh, event. It's a panel discussion with uh, Jerome Benton and Ingrid Chavez and, uh, few uh, writers like uh, Alan Bolio. Yeah, he was in the house. Shout out to Alan. Yeah, and uh, Dwayne Tudor. Mm-hmm. And uh guy from the Star Tribune. Um, Joe uh or no not Bean. Joe. Jim Jim uh Bean. No, nah. nah, not him. Breen or nah, 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 it wasn't who? John Breen. It wasn't John Breen. It was Jim somebody. I, I I apologize if I can't remember your name. But he wrote the book um the uh, the gold experience book the mm-hmm. uh, well, the one what I got yeah the, the, about uh, hey, that's not, uh Prince uh, in the 90s yeah I don't yeah. remember um I can't remember his last name I can't get it right now either yeah mm-hmm. but um but during the panel Tamar actually came in right and Dwayne asked her to uh, you know join you know for a second so she was talking and told some good stories and everything like that and she got really emotional you know during the, the whole panel yeah. so but uh i think lc got some 
I think she got some uh, video footage of it. Okay, because I know so, it was live. I, I saw some of it. I saw Tamar, but it threw me off because Tamar's not on the the advertiser. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, right. is that, you know, something else happening? Because I knew she was at the uh, Electric Feeders. She did a performance at Electric, Electric Feeders. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, all in all, today was a hell of a day. Mm-hmm. So, uh, live mm-hmm. entertainment. Uh, the Paisley Celebration, the NPG, not the, well, former members of the NPG, or you can still say connected. NPG is just like so big a family. But the funk soldiers turned Paisley Park out. I mean, mm-hmm. Shelby uh, and uh, Kurt. Kurt was the you know basically the the, the music director of the, uh, of the funk soldiers. Um, Kip Blackshire, mm-hmm. and then the <laughs> MPG Horns is just the vision Prince had for them because uh, they were on the panel today. They were talking about his vision for you know the twelve. What they had, I think, eleven horn players. Mm-hmm. And at the time, uh, Adrian Crutchfield was saying he they, they they thought they were in competition with each other because they just knew Prince wasn't gonna keep eleven horn players. But they were wrong. And uh, so they wanted to give us a taste of, like, Prince's vision as far as the, the, the horns. So they had a part in the show where they said that they would play a song. Uh, got the name of it. I don't know if it was called Amber or something. But it was like it's a, it's a musical. It's all music, no no, no, uh, no singing. And Prince would go and get changed during this song. And it was a heck of a song, man. You know, it, it shows Prince's depth and just arranging and, 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 and his knowledge of horns. Right. Know? And so, uh, but the highlight for me, they played Black Muse and they played Old Friends for Sale. Uh, shout out to Ida doing her thing on Rock and Roll is Alive. That bass solo was killer. Mm. Killer. Old friends for mean, sale. You know, yeah, Renato Neto Woo. doing his thing. So it was basically the the, the band that did the uh, the Prince Live concert show. So they tore the house down, man. They 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 did the daggone thing, you know. So um, hopefully, like I said, I, I don't know where what's going to happen in the future, but I would love for that version, you know, the Funk Soldiers just to go out and <laughs> do something, tour, you know, because there's a market yeah. for what they do, because they're, they're tight, and they're a tight band, I mean, you know, so, um, like, Prince's vision is like, you know, like, like he done had all these babies or branches off his, off his foundation, it's, it's amazing all the talent that, that he was, that he had around him. And the, the most interesting story of the day for me at the celebration, uh, Adrian Crutchfield told uh, about um, Mono Neon. He was saying that uh, long as they were there, they were there before Mono, and then Mono came, and they knew Mono was talented and everything. Mm-hmm. And um, he said that he would Mono would do stuff that you weren't supposed to do and most people would get in trouble for it. Mm-hmm. Mono wouldn't get in trouble for mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he said one day he was at rehearsal and Prince stopped he had to take a phone call or something. <laughs> and Mono Nehan goes up to Prince's guitar board you know on the floor mm-hmm. <laughs> and starts resetting <laughs> stuff and picked up Prince's guitar Mm-hmm. And start playing it. What? Wow. And Prince comes out and watches for a minute, goes over and gets the bass and stands next to Mono while Mono's playing Prince's guitar. Prince playing here. Yeah. And they start jamming. Mm-hmm. And Adrian's in there going saying, I ain't never been able to get him right. with I can't eat potato chips off. On stage or nothing. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, this dude comes in and don't get in trouble for none of the mm. shit he do, right? 
And then he said he thought about it, and he said, if you really listen to Mono Neon, he thinks Prince sees himself in Mono Neon of how his attitude is mm -hmm. and just how he thinks they click. Right. It's almost like the, he's looking at a version of himself. Right. And that's why <laughs> Mono can get away with what he get away with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because Prince saw himself in Mono Neon. And as far as the group that they had at the time, they didn't have a name. The mm -hmm. one that uh, Mono Neon posted the, yeah. them in the uh, Love for Another mm -hmm. Room playing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was saying that Mono Neon at the time, that's the last muse Prince had. Because mm -hmm. that's who Prince was mute, vibing with. You know, up until the day of his transition. That's who, that's who's going to be the yeah. next. That was his his jazz fusion, whatever he was, the direction right. he was going. You know, he was going, you know, do some, like he said, uh, he wanted to flip the industry on his on his head, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? When people tell Prince that he can't do this, he can't do that, he ain't this, he ain't that, whatever. Right. And he was, he was going to do it, you know what I'm saying? And if you just look at, like I said, the horns, you've never seen anybody really have the 12 horns on stage. Just mm, leading yeah. songs and, you know, so, um, heck of a day, man, heck of a day. And they ended with the NPG, you understand? They ended with the NPG. Hey, man, like I said, it, this was worth the trip for me, right NPG. On. So if you had to rate the NPG show tonight, turn the table scale out of five. I'm gonna give it a four point five out of five. What about you? I mean, I give it a four point five. Four point five. I can go for that. I can go for that. I can go for that. For sure. For sure. It was a great show. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah. So you know, MPG come to town, and like I said, they were missing. You know, Tommy Barbarella, Sunny T. T. Yeah. Um, and um, well, they haven't had uh Michael B for a minute, so. Yeah. Um, Cause the drummer at the uh, First Avenue, that one might be right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's it, people. Yeah, you know, a great night, great day. Oh yeah. So get at us in the comment section. We're very tired, so we're gonna holler. Tired and hungry. <laughs> Peace. Peace.